blue. Oh, that was so beautiful. Welcome, Holy Spirit. And we welcome you, all of you in the sanctuary tonight, and we welcome our Oasis Christian family on Facebook. And we ask right now that you hit that little button. It's the little arrow. It says share, and share the good word tonight. Again, Miss Jim is going to be teaching us on power of prayer. And she's been teaching us for weeks, and it has just been so empowering. And I know that it's it's helped all of us in our walk with God to be closer and, and pray more powerful prayers. Because, you know, God says to ask what we would have need of and that he would give us these things according to his will. So the more that we can empower ourselves by studying the word and really learning how to pray. You know, none of us have, have gotten there yet. I mean, we're not, none of us have gotten there. And so every little time that we can be reminded of God's word and we can be reminded of the power that is ours through the power of Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, and that we can pray boldly. And so it's just awesome uh, listening to her teachings. I know you'll want to go back and replay those, some of those on uh, prayer. So we know you look forward to that tonight. So be sure to hit that share button. Let's go ahead and just welcome in the Holy Spirit. Father God, we thank you so much that we do have a midweek service. We thank you, Father God, that you have joined us together in cords of love, Father God, and that you have a good word for us this night. Father God, we thank you for each and every member of Oasis Christian Center, for those who are here tonight, Father God, and those that watch us over the airwaves, Father God. We just thank you for each and every one. Father, we ask that your spirit go out and just open our hearts that we can really receive what you have for us this night and open our eyes to see you more clearly and to really listen to you and then have courage and strength that only comes through the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to do what you have purposed us to do. Father, we thank you so much that you love us so much, that you gave us Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for dying on that cross for us. Thank you for loving us and setting the example by which we can live and follow Father God in the things of obedience that he has purposed for us. And thank you, Father God, that through Jesus' death, he was resurrected and that he lives inside of us and that the power of the Holy Spirit now can help us and guide us and comfort us through everything in this life. We give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'm going to uh, read a little devotion. This is from Sarah Young, and it is for today. And um, so it's June 5th. If you do follow this, this is in his presence is the fullness of joy. And this is enjoy peace in his presence. And, um, you know, Sarah Young passed away, but she wrote a lot of different journals and devotions uh, before she passed. And um, they just, it, it, they've got good... Um, you know, the good verses in them, you know, that speak on different things like peace or joy or whatever it is that you're needing. So I would just recommend that maybe if you don't have a devotional that you'd get one of those because it really does speak from the heart of God. All right, and the verse, one of the verses for tonight is from Psalms 37 and 4 that says, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And it says, Remember that you live in a fallen world, an abnormal world, tainted by sin. Much frustration and failure result from your seeking perfection in life. There is nothing perfect in this world except me. That is why closeness to me satisfies your deep yearnings and fills you with joy. I have planted a longing for perfection in every human heart. This is a good desire which I alone can fulfill. But most people seek this fulfillment, fulfillment in people and in earthly pleasures or achievements. Thus they create idols before which they bow down. You will have no other gods before me. Make me the deepest desire of your heart and let me fulfill your yearning for perfection. And one of my little reflections on that, and I just started thanking God, and I said, thank you, God, that when we're staying in you, we can be satisfied, and we can achieve a perfect contentment. And that is why 
I mean, while we stay in you, because you have placed the desires in our heart. And when I lean outside of you or reach outside of you, I know I come short. But when I stay in you, your delight fills my every desire. So we just thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. And we're going to go ahead and turn it over to praise and worship. Man, well, glory to God. God, can you talk? <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. You're not God. You're God. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so are you happy to be here tonight? Let me hear your shout to the Lord. Glory. Oh, that's, that's, that still kind of pitiful. Let's try that again. We want to shout to the Lord with a voice of trial. Amen? Thank you, Chef. I hear you. <laughs> Glory, glory, glory. Uh, and we're going to give him some glory tonight. Amen?
been so long. We're going to turn it over now. Amen. Somebody give him a shout. Glory. Glory. You might be seated. The girls have to tell me that sometimes. I leave you standing up. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's good to see Beverly and Stephanie back. We missed them Sunday. Glad to have y'all. Okay. And Stewart. Yep. Yes. Oh, and Stewart. Yes. Thank you. Glad to have you back, man. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to, it's time for our tithes and offering, if you'll get that ready. And uh, and welcome out there, Facebook and YouTube, whatever y'all are listening on. We welcome you at this time also. Father God, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for the blessings that you have given me today, Father God. Father, I thank you for the ones that are here tonight. I thank you, Lord, for the uh, Facebook and YouTube out there giving into this ministry, Father God. And we just thank you for blessing us when we do pay our tithes and offering. You always give us back more than 10%, Lord, and we thank you for that. Amen. 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 Now the ways to give. As a tithe and give offering... As I tithe and give offerings. I believe and I receive. I believe and I receive. Jobs and better jobs. Jobs and better jobs. Race. Raises and bonuses. Raises and bonuses. Benefits. Benefits. Sales and commissions. Sales and commissions. Favorable settlement. Favorable settlement. Estates and inheritances. Estates and inheritances. Interest and income. Interest and income. Rebates and returns. Rebates and returns. Discounts and dividends. Discounts and dividends. Checks and mail. Checks and mail. Gifts and surprises. Gifts and surprises. Finding money. Finding money. Bills decrease. Bills decrease. Bills paid off. Bills paid off. Blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For meeting all my financial needs. For meeting all my financial needs. That I may now have more than enough. To give into the kingdom of God. To give into the kingdom of God. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then the ways you can give is www.paypal.me slash Oasis Family Church. You can text to give 334-274-7885. You can use the donate button at www.oasisfamilychurch.net. We also have cash out, enter dollar sign Oasis Family Church. And mail your donations to P.O. Box 246, Miss Station, Alabama, 36877. And now we will have Miss Jim to come up and give us the word. Amen. Worthy to be acknowledged. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for who you are to us. Thank you for being such a good God. You're so good, so merciful, so caring, so compassionate, so kind. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here. Thank you, Lord, for giving me an opportunity, Lord, to teach your word once more. I ask, Lord, that you will be with me, that you will lead me and guide me. And, Lord, bless this lesson that it would be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I had a bit of a battle going on. <laughs> um, those of you who are teachers, you know how it is sometimes. 
you know, you think you have something, and then you all go home about it, and then in the last minute, God just pulls the plug and say no. <laughs> so I wanted so badly to teach from this book. It's um, I don't know if y'all can see. It. it says how to pray for lost loved ones by Dutch Sheets. You know, if you guys know Dutch Sheets. Um, the first time I met him, I was at the North Church. Um, probably about, hmm, I had just had Matthews, so I I think Matthews 28, I don't think he'll mind me telling his age anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I had just I had him just maybe a few months old when the chiefs came to the church I was attending. And um, so it's about that love that I had his book. That's how I can get to time. And it, you know, it's a pretty good book, and I did use the pointers in this book to pray for an unsaved loved one. Um, I think I was driving down, I don't know, that street there by Walgreens one day, and the Holy Spirit told me to use the pointers in this book to pray for this particular person, plus a few other scriptures that he had given me from listening to Charles Stanley. And I did, I prayed for him for about three months, and he got saved. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So, um, it is, it, you know, for those of you who don't know that sheets, you know, I, I recommend this book, How to Pray for Unsaved Lost Loved Ones. But you can also use it to pray for other people too. It's not, you know, designated just for our loved ones. The biblical principles from this book can be used to pray for our friends, you know, people that we don't know. <coughs> The word works for everyone, you know, and so, okay. <laughs> and so I wanted so badly to teach him this book, and I just knew this, this is the book I'm going to teach, you know, and I have my lesson not prepared, and um, God let me. You know, sometimes God will let you do some, some things. But then this afternoon, when I was going over the lesson, all of a sudden I knew, no. <laughs> You're not teaching from that book, at least not tonight. <laughs> so I'm uh, the lesson of you know I'm still on prayer, and um, hopefully it'll, it'll be good. <laughs> it's still it's I'm still teaching on prayer. So we're reading from the book of Acts. Gosh, I could have sworn I put it in here. Okay, Acts 12, 5, verse 5 through 12. And it's a lot of scripture, but I know you guys don't mind because we, we, love, scripture. we love scripture in this church. We do. Now, by the time that Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded for it to take Peter also. <coughs> Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him in four quartarians of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now Herod, um, obviously, uh, you know, he had heard the disciples preach, teach about Jesus, and he had seen uh, miracles and all that. So he was going to make sure that Herod but, um, you know, that uh, Peter stayed put. He had him, he, you know, in the innermost part of the prison, he had four quartarians of soldiers. I'm not quite sure how many soldiers um, that is. Maybe someone can look it up for me. But Peter was on the lock and key. He was on the chains. He was heavily guarded. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing by the church unto God for him. The key word here in this verse is without ceasing. Without ceasing. You know, sometimes we think that when we come into um, a situation or a problem that we're facing and we just pray maybe one time, two times, three times, and that's it. No. Sometimes the problem requires consistency. That's right. You know, we, we just have to keep it there. And so the church was praying without ceasing. They were, you know, they were praying around the clock. They were crying out to God on, on behalf of Peter. 
No, Peter um, probably couldn't pray. You know, sometimes we're in that situation where we can't pray. We're so burdened, we're so heavy. Sometimes we can't think, we can't put two thoughts together. And that's where our fellow brothers and sisters come in. You know, we, we're there to help each other. Um, one time when the children of Israel were fighting, I think it was the Amalekites, or it could have been the Amorites, I'm not sure, one of them. Moses, the Bible said, as when Moses held his hands up, the children prevailed, children of Israel prevailed. When his hands got tied and he let it down, the enemies prevailed. And so um, Aaron and um, her, they came beside him and they put rocks on his arms and they held it up. Mm -hmm. We need to hold each other's hands yes. up. Yes. 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 You know, that's what we're supposed to do as a church, through prayer and, yes. you know, other means. Because, you know, sometimes the Holy Spirit will give you something to pray about that person that that person never would think about praying. Mm -hmm. You know, many, you know, we put our heads together and God knows how to speak to each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. And he'll give us certain things to pray for that person. So here Peter was in prison. And um, I don't know what he was doing. I tried to imagine myself in that situation. And for the life of me, I can't. <laughs> I can't see myself in prison. And I think mostly because um, I'm a bit claustrophobic and I, I just can't be locked off. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I'd go crazy just being behind, just knowing that I'm behind bars and, and I can't get out. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, they were praying consistently for, for Peter. They were praying without ceasing. And when Herod would have brought him forward. The same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the, the door kept the prison. Peter fell asleep. I guess there's nothing else to do. I mean, what else can you do? If you cry, you can only cry so much. And the prison was probably dark, you know, so I guess Peter just figured I may as well sleep. But while he was sleeping, his brothers and sisters were praying. Sometimes when we're sleeping, others are praying for us. Yes. Amen. We have no idea. You know, sometimes I find myself praying for people, certain ones. I mean, and sometimes it could be someone that I haven't seen in years. I haven't laid eyes on them, I haven't spoken to them, but here I am praying for them. And, you know, and, and as I'm driving, most times I'm driving and I, I talk to myself and I say, Lord, they'll never know that I prayed for them today. <laughs> So we don't know when someone is praying for us. So Peter was asleep, and, um, and in verse 7, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off of him. When God is involved in our situation, it doesn't matter what chains people put on you. Uh -huh. It's not going to hold you. Amen. It's going to fall off. Uh -huh. The chains cannot stand hold the presence of holiness. Locked doors can't stand the presence. Can't lock you in. You know? Amen. You are going to be delivered. You're going to be set free. So here Peter was. He was sound asleep. Angel came and woke him up. Angel said, get up. His chains fell off. He said, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And, and so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garments about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Have you ever had a situation where you're thinking, Am I, did I really hear that? Or did I really see that? Uh -huh. Or maybe I'm going crazy. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I imagined it. You know, uh, this morning, this afternoon, um, I went home and I was, um, you know, ab approaching my door. And, you know, my husband has got all this stuff in the garage, you know, pushed up against the, 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 the wall of the garage. And I could have swore I saw something slid around there. You know, that stuff. And I stood there for a few minutes, you know, and I'm thinking, did I really see that? 
maybe, you know, it's a shadow or something. Maybe my eyes are playing tricks on me. I mean, I, I, my, I was on alert then because I didn't know if I had seen something, something it was a lizard or a snake or, <laughs> I mean, I was on high alert. <laughs> and I, I punched in that code very carefully, you know, and I was looking there and I scooted in that house really fast. Up to this day, up to now, I still can't figure out if I imagined it or if something really slid there. And so as I was coming out the door to come to church, I thought, I have to come to, to, you know, to spray some stuff or keep some noise or something just in case something is there, you know? You know, sometimes we don't know. Peter put himself in this situation. He wasn't sure whether this, is this really happening? You know, am I dreaming? Maybe the desire to get out of this prison, you know, has gotten to my head and played tricks on me. He, or maybe I, I just saw a vision of something that's about to happen. But it was real. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know with surety that the Lord had sent his angel and delivered me out of the hand of Herod. And from all the expectation of the people of the Jews, so Peter finally came to his senses, came to himself. He realized this is not, you know, this is not the dream. This is not the vision. This just happened. I'm free. I'm out of prison. But now his people are still praying. They're still praying to Peter. So let's go on with the story. And when, uh, and verse 13, 12, and when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark where were many were gathered to get praying. And as Peter knocked on the door of the gate, the damsel came to her name Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told, Peter, told how Peter was before the gate. And they said on the door, thou art mad. <laughs> now here they are praying <laughs> Peter's deliverance. <laughs> Peter gets delivered, and they're telling her she's crazy. You know, we're no different. Don't we right. do that? Right. Yes. You know, we're praying for something, and we're praying, and we're praying, and praying, and then God answers it, and then, oh my God, I can't believe you answered my prayer. Why do we do that? <laughs> <laughs> so they told her, you know, she was mad, but she constantly affirmed that it was so. Then said they, oh, well, maybe it's an angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. They were astonished. They prayed, <laughs> and God delivered Peter, and they're astonished. <laughs> Says a lot about their faith, don't it? Mm -hmm. But he, beckoning unto them with his hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and his brethren. And he departed and went into another place. When prayer changes things, we've all heard that. God may not move on our timetable like we would like him to. The word says a thousand day is as a, a, a thousand years is as a day and a day is as a thousand years. You know, sometimes when I'm praying for something and I need it urgently, I find myself telling the Lord, Lord, please, you know, you know, Answer this prayer in our time, in my time, in our time. <laughs> because I don't want that thousand days a year thing. I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. But I said, Lord, you know the day and age that we're living. You know we have, you know, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. And this, you know, and I'm telling the Lord, answer it by so and such and such a time. Sometimes he does. But sometimes, you know, sometimes I have to wait. But you know what? God is never late. He's always right on time. So Peter was delivered. He was delivered because the, the, the disciples prayed. And they prayed in faith. See, when we pray, we have to pray in faith. We have to pray believing. But the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a, a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He rewards us when we diligently seek him. 
you know, we can't just come haphazardly, you know, well, if it does, it does. If it doesn't, well, okay, I have plan B, I call that, no. You know, we have to be diligent in, in, the, in the way we pray. You know, we have to pray with passion. We have to pray with zeal. We have to pray expecting something. I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. We must have that bulldog faith. Have you ever seen a bulldog hold on to something? Mm -hmm. He clamps his jaw shut in that thing, and no matter what he do, he wouldn't let go of it. We have to have bulldog faith. We have to have, the, you know, uh, that determination. No matter what the circumstances look like, no matter what people are saying to us, no matter what our, our you know, the, uh, the voices in our head is telling us, you know, sometimes we hear these voices, oh, it's never going to happen. Oh, you may as well give up. Um, you know, it's too late. You know, all kinds of stuff. But we have to be determined. We have to, you know, like God told, I think it was Ezekiel, set your foreign like a flint. He didn't want to go and prophesy to the Israelites because they wouldn't receive the word. And, you know, they didn't want to hear what he had to say. And God said, go. You set your forehead like a flint and go and tell them what I say. We have to set our forehead like a flint. And we have to hold on to God's word and we have to seek him. We have to seek him consistently. Yes. We have to, you know, day and night, we have to be before him. Praying about this situation. Um, there was a situ situation, um, I guess, about a year or two ago, in, with one of my family members. And um, I, you know, it, it was not good, but I was determined that this, this, this thing, this attack wasn't going to work. And I tell you, I would pray when, when every time I get in my car all the way here, I had a confession that I was saying. And I said it over and over again. And actually, I counted it to see how many times I was able to say it takes like 30 minutes for me to get from home to here. And I would say that confession about a little over 300 times. Then after church, I get back in my car and I'm saying it. If I stop at the store, I'm shopping, I'm, I'm confessing this outcome that I'm desiring. Get back in the car, I'm driving. I'm confessing it. Pull up in the garage. I sit there sometimes and I confess it over and over again. Go into the house, same thing. Even if I'm not saying it verbally, it's in my head. I'm, I'm thinking it. My mind is just rolling it out over and over and over. That's how we have to do. We have to be persistent. We have to be determined. You know, if people may be around you talking, you, you block them out. You, you, you know, you're, you're praying. You're confessing the word over and over again. That's diligence. Diligently seeking seek him. And the word, the Bible says that he's, you, he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. If you're praying and God isn't answering your prayers, maybe do a checkup. How are you praying? Are you diligent? Are you fervent? Are you praying with passion? Do you really want this thing? You know, it's a difference when we really, really, really want something. The, the way we approach the situation from when, oh, well, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, uh, no big deal. Total different. <coughs> so we have to have that bold out faith. And no matter what the situation looks like, no matter what the voices around us are saying, you know, we, you know we're sticking to God's word. Telling him what his word says. Isaiah 43, 26, put me in remembrance. Let us speak together, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. This is the, um, I don't know what version this is, probably the King James Version. But um, I have a few other versions that I'm going to read. Hold on, Christian Standard says, take me to court. That's the uh, courts of heaven, for those of you who don't know, not the earthly court. <laughs> <laughs> Let us argue our case. State your case so that you may be vindicated. You know, God wants to hear from us. Uh -huh. He wants to hear what we, you know, what we have to say. He wants to hear our take on the situation. You know, it, it's, you know, it's not just, well, this is it, and, you know, you better do it or else. He wants to hear from us. 
He's not going to smack you over the head just because you say, but well, Lord, what's going on? Why, why is this happening? I don't understand this. I do it all the time. I, you know, like today, for example, when you know the lesson just changed, I was like, Lord, I just can't figure this out. I don't know, I don't know what's going on, but I'll go with the flow. God says, state your case that you may be proved right. Um, the message said, make your case against me. Let's have this out. Make your arguments. Prove that you're right. And how do we do that? By reminding God of what he said. He said, put him in remembrance of his word. In other words, remind him of what he said. You know, kids are good at that. You promise them something, and they will remind you, but mom, you promised that, you promised, you said it, when did I say it? So, such and such a time, don't you remember you said? And they probably added a few more things that you didn't say. You know? But God wants to hear from us. The Bible in basic English said, put me in mind of this, let us stay of the cause between us. Put forward your cause so that you may be seen to be in the right. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. Now God is saying for us to put him in remembrance, to remind him of what he said. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11 said, For as the rain comes down from, and the snow from heaven and, and does not return thither but water in the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. You see, um, God gives seed to the sower yes. and bread to the eater. Yes. So that's the reason to sow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because if you sow, you will eat. Yes. Many of us like to eat, just don't like to sow. Mm -hmm. You know, if we don't put anything in the bank, we are not going to be able to go make withdrawals. Mm -hmm. Have to put stuff in. Or you might be able to get a little something out, but they'll hit you with the fee. <laughs> we don't want that, do we? And verse 11, he says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return into unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and cause me the thing where I sent it. In other words, whatever I say will accomplish what it's supposed to accomplish. My word it goes forth out of my mouth. I learned this from listening to Kenneth Copeland years ago when he was teaching um, he was teaching on how to remind God of his word. And he said, if, if you cannot remember, you know, what the word says, find it. You know, now we, yes. we've got it good, real good because we can Google it. Yes. You yes. know, the, uh, Oral Roberts and, and uh, you know, those guys, um, they didn't, in their days, they didn't have Google. Mm -hmm. They had to search the scripture. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in as much as Google is good and helpful, I think maybe we do a lot better without it because we really have to search, we really have to be, yeah. and it will help us a lot more than just depending on Google. But you know, thank God for Google. So, you know, you said find the scripture that addresses your particular situation and, and what God said about it. And ask him, you know, said, you know, look, you said, hold your Bible up and said, Lord. Right here, see, this is what you said right here. You're reminding God. You know, He wants to hear from us. He, not that He needs remembering, you know, reminding. God is not, you know, um, in, you know, he, is, he doesn't have dementia. He's got good memory, He remembers everything. But He wants us to tell Him. Because when we do, we're putting, out, putting it out into the atmosphere. And you know, there's something about putting out the word of God into the atmosphere that has an effect. It, it has a, a spiritual force. You know, the enemy can't say, oh, well, she don't really know what you said. Because we're speaking, you know, we're speaking it. So he said, you know, remind God. And, and God says that if it's a word that goes forth out of my mouth, it shall prosper in the thing where do I send it. Um, Yesterday, I think it was, that me and I were up here praying, and then I remember this verse that I hadn't thought about it in a while, Jeremiah 1.12, for I will hasten my word to perform. When we remind God of his word, 
He said he'll hasten the performing. You want God to hasten some stuff? Tell him what he said. You know, he's faithful to his word. Tell God what he said in prayer. Remind him. God will make a way. No matter how difficult the situation is, God will make a way. God cares. He honors his word. You know, I, I, um, I, uh, I've had some unusual experiences. Um, when we lived in Hawaii, this was seven years ago. My husband was still on active duty. Uh, we had gotten this house. We, we were in the hotel for about six weeks or so, and you know, we, we were looking for houses, and we couldn't find any good house that I liked. And and um, and finally, we heard about this house, and we went to check it out. Me and my husband, and you know, my two kids at the time. Matt was needing a blimp on the radar. <laughs> and um, it was a nice house. Oh, it was a nice house. The neighborhood was nice. It, it was, you know, strategically located. It was like five, ten minutes from, from the church where I was going, you know, for where they were going to go to school for about 15 minutes. They done the stores, you know. It was just, it was, I mean, it was just the best location. And um, we didn't know when we were going to get the house, but me and, me, me and the kids, we were outside in the yard, and we prayed, me and Patton and Michael, we came into agreement, we claimed the house. This is our house, we're getting this house. And so when we went in the house, Petal claimed her room. Petal said, this is my room, I claim this room. <laughs> and, and Michael said, this is his room, not my room, I claim this one. Well, long story short, we got the house. I didn't like the rent. Oh my God, it was $950 a month. Back in those days, that was a lot of money. Because yes. it didn't include electricity and water and garbage and any of that. So I, I just didn't like this, you know, $950. I just, oh my God, Lord. Why couldn't it, you know, why couldn't it be like $100 cheaper? I would say this, Lord, $100, $100 cheaper. Fast forward, I'm speeding up. Um, me and my husband, well, he's not interested in figure skating. I'm the figure skating lady. But it was the, you know, the saga, the scandal, the Nancy Kerrigan, Tanya Hart, the thing going on. So we were glued to the TV watching it, and we heard the doorbell, ding dong. And so um, I sent him, because I didn't want to, I didn't want to miss what was going on. I said, you go. So he went, and it was our landlord standing there. And um, hmm. I'm trying to tell, decide if I should tell this part. I think I will. Before, before the night I came, the night before, I had a dream. And the mailman, you know, drove up in our driveway, and he came into our house and put two gift packages. I, they were identically wrapped. Just put it down in the foyer and left. And I was standing there looking at him and thinking, how did he just come and put two packages and left and they say anything? And I'm looking at the two, you know, gift boxes. So the landlord comes the next day. And, um, uh, you know, I'm watching, and I'm, I'm brooding what's going on. And my husband comes back and he said, you're not going to believe this. I said, what? He said, that was, that was the landlord. And I said, well, what did he want? He said, um, he came and said he was going to reduce our rent and, and for us to tell him how much we wanted, you know, to be reduced. <laughs> <laughs> now, which landlord, you know, gives the tenants a, cho a choice? So I said, well, I hope he told him 100. <laughs> And he said, I wanted to say 100, but I thought it might be too much. I'm like, what? He <laughs> <laughs> should have told him 100. Yeah. I said, well, how much did he, how much did he knock off the rent? He said, well, he knocked off 50 bucks, but he also gave us this gift card. This, you know, this store needs a $50 gift card. Aww. That was the dream. $50, two gift right? <laughs> you know what? I didn't, I, I didn't get the hundred, but $50 is better than nothing at all. Yes, yes. 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 That was
over $600 a year we save. Mm -hmm. right. Those tell me that God don't hear. Oh, he right. hears. And that he doesn't care. Yes, he does. And I mean, it's amazing how he works. You know, I call my friend. I, I would always forget that Hawaii is six hours behind. So usually, <laughs> when I'm calling her, you know, it, it, it's, um, you know, when it's 8 o'clock here, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning, you know. And she's, she had an um, these duplex across the street that she owned. And she said, Jim, that was God. That was God because I'm a landlord and there is no way I'm coming at Christmas time to reduce the rent. And I'm definitely not telling the tenant to pick how much he wants to be rich. <laughs> yes. But see, that's how God works. Yes. God has got an amazing sense of humor. Yes. And so he said he will hasten his word to perform. Yes. You know, God heard me, he heard my prayer. Yes. And he hastened. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something to that gym. <laughs> and he, you know, he at Christmas time, we got a fifty dollar gift card yeah. to go and shop, plus fifty dollars off of our rent. That was God. That was God. God loves us, and when we pray, He hears us. He wants us to approach Him. He wants us to talk to Him. You know, we don't have to go with the thou and these and that. That's how they spoke in Bible days. We don't talk like that these days. Do you hear anybody? There, there was a show one time, it didn't last too long, and I mean, it, you can figure out. They, they don't talk about dying and being, and, you know. Nobody wants to hear it in modern day, but they like, you know. <laughs> it didn't last too long, they canceled it. God wants us to come to Him as us. He doesn't want us to put on airs and graces, He doesn't want us to be try to be sanctimonious, you know, and, and all this stuff, this religious garbage. He wants us to come, come to him just as we are, express ourselves. He knows every way. He knows what we're thinking. He knows our, you know, our weaknesses, our strengths. He knows our doubts. He knows everything. So we may as well be honest. He loves honesty. And, and when we come and we talk to him and, you know, we tell him our doubts and our fears and, you know, and things that we are apprehensive about and God will, you know, he will reveal things to us. He will lead us. He will open doors. He will give us, you know, give us a way out. He will break some chains if he has to. Open some doors. If he has to send an angel, he'll send that angel. So we have to pray with fervency. We have to pray with passion and expect. We have to expect him to do what he says he's going to do. You know, if I, you know, if I told, um, let's say I told Bean, I'm, you know, next Friday I'm going to give you 500 bucks. <laughs> next Friday, you know, Bean would be looking for me. Yes, he would. He'd be expecting. She, you know, she has the crib and all the, you know, the things that go along with it, and the, you know, and the, the diaper bags, and she has a bag set so she can take it to the hospital, and she have a plan, her and her husband, what's, you know, the doctor's name, his number, you know, everything was the quickest route to the hospital. See, we make preparations. You know, if we were expecting a package, I ordered something off of Amazon the other day, and, and I came home and I put up in the drive you know, I was looking, I wanted that package came. What I'm expecting. When we pray and we ask God for something, we need to expect. We have to be in that era of expectancy. We have to expect God to do what he says he's going to do. We also have to when we pray, make sure we're praying in accordance with his will. When we were doing um, the Lord's Prayer, I think I taught this. We cannot ask 
outside of God's will. Amen. John 5, 14 and 15, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hearing us. The first time the Holy Spirit highlighted this verse to me, I remember I was sitting at the dining table um, with, with my kids, Petal and Michael. It was a school morning, and I used to have devotions with them, you know, before we leave the house. And um, they were reading, we were reading in John, and this verse just jumped out at me. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. That's the key to getting our, our prayers answered. Ask in accordance with his will. Right? If you don't know what the will of God is concerning that situation, search the word. If you can't find anything, pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you, lead you, guide you. He will. Um, I have a friend, um, you know, we give these exchange greetings on a uh, messenger every morning. And this morning she said me, so, you know, I was, I, you know, I was struggling with the lesson from this last night. And um, I, I knew Pastor said continue on prayer. So I knew that that's what I have to do. But the direction that, you know, I wasn't too sure which direction to go. So I opened up Messenger, and here she is. She sent me something, you know, and it said, prayer, prayer, prayer. And I knew instantly God was confirming. Mm -hmm. See how God works? Yeah. Yeah. She had no idea that she, she confirmed something that I was struggling. Not that I was struggling with teaching on prayer, but the direction. You know, the, I had a, some issues with it. And, you know, God used her to confirm to me, yes. this yes. is the direction, this is, this is what I want you to do. Amen. God will lead us. He will guide us. You know, he wouldn't leave us hanging. If we're earnestly seeking, if we're expecting, expecting, that's the key word, we have to expect. If you don't expect nothing, you're not going to get anything. Amen. You have to expect. Um, a couple of several years ago, I had sown a seed, and the, um, you know, I got a word. And the word was, expect a turnaround in your finances in August. <laughs> and so um, it, when I got the word, it wasn't quite August month. So that August month, I'm looking. I'm looking. When August month came and August month went, nothing, nothing, there was no turnaround. So I thought, well, maybe it's next August. Because, you know, sometimes when we get a word, we're thinking it's now. Right. But I, I found out, no, it, it sometimes, may it, no, it may be several years down the road. Um, you know, August month is about to come again. I'm expecting. I'm looking. Because, and I'm reminding God that he said, Lord, you said expect to turn around in my finances in August. And I'm expecting, I'm looking. See how you do it? Mm -hmm. You know, you look. Right. You know, you, you're just anticipating right. something to happen. And so, you know, God is faithful to his word. He says that his word will accomplish that which he sent it out to do. He will hasten his word to perform. You know, it may take a while. You know, we may be praying for someone to get saved. Some of us are praying for our unsaved loved one for years. You may be praying 30 years. Mm -hmm. It may be 35 years. And you, it doesn't look like that person is going to get saved. Don't give up. Amen. God has Amen. heard your prayer. God loves that person more than you could ever love them. Uh -huh. He loved them so much that he gave his son to, to die for them. So if you've been praying 30 something years, you can be sure that God is going to answer that prayer. That person is getting saved before they leave this earth. Before my brother departed, you know, um, to die, um, this earth, I was... I, you know, I struggled with this because I wasn't sure when he was saved. And I said, Lord, I, we had just left prayer, but, you know, we used to pray back there. And I was driving and I said, Lord, my brother cannot depart this earth. I said, do not let him depart this earth. 
unless he gets it right with you. Uh -huh. Please yes. not let him depart. Yes. So I, I, um, I went home and the phone rang about 15, 20 minutes. And um, you know, they were telling me, it was a phone call from home, they were telling me it, it doesn't look good. It looked just like the devil, you know, yeah. come with bad news. Uh -huh. And I was, I was listening, but I wasn't receiving it. You know, in my spirit, I wasn't receiving it. And um, I decided, you know, I'm going to petition God for this. So I, you know, fire up the computer and I type a prayer petition and I prayed it. And the next day, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, your brother needs some more time. And I could, just like that, he gave me the story with Joshua and the children of Israel when they were fighting, they were in a battle. And um, they needed time to defeat their enemies. And Joshua commanded the sun to stand still. And, and the sun didn't go down until the battle was over. So I ran, you know, and I said, you know, make an adjustment to this petition. So I did, and I said, Lord, you know, your Holy Spirit told me this. And you gave the children of Israel more time because they needed time to win. Yes. And I said, my brother needs time. The Holy Spirit uh -huh. says he needs time. Uh -huh. Well, I did, you know, the next day the phone rings again, and my brother is home. Mm -hmm. One minute the man is dying, mm -hmm. <laughs> the next minute he's home. I said, what happened? They said, well, we don't know, you just made a turn around and the doctor said, <laughs> the doctor said that it would be better if he, you know, it'd be better for him if he goes Praise home. God. So they sent him home. God. Well, you know what, during that time, um, you know, him and his wife, they, they were at odds with each other. And she came to visit him. And they reconciled. Okay, they God. forgave each other. Yes. See, this was the unfinished business that my brother had. Yes. That, my, that God wanted him to take care of before he yes. departed the earth. I didn't yes. know it. Yes. And my nieces, they were there. And, and they said to me, Aunt Jem, you would not believe how they were talking to each other. He called her Marjo. Marjo, her name is Marjorie. <laughs> and, uh, and, and she called him, you know, by his name, his name was Evan. And she said they were talking like they were never mad with each other. They had acknowledged that they had done each other wrong. And they asked each other forgiveness. Oh, yes. Isn't God good? Praise yes. God. God gave my brother time. He needed time. To, you know, you know, to fix some things before he depart this earth. And once that was done, in, in about two weeks, he was gone. God heard me. I said, do not let him go. Please do not let him go until he get it right. I was fervent. You know, we need to pray that with that kind of fervency, you know, when we're praying for others that are not related to us. It doesn't have to be blood, you know, for us to be fervent, for us to be That's passionate. Right. That's right. We need that passion. We need that fervency. We need that, you know, that extra, you know. That's what God is looking for. He wants us to feel, you know, that, that for that person. You know, if they're hurting, you know, whatever they're going through, you know how it is when you're in pain. You know, you feel the pain. As parents, when our kids hurt, we hurt, don't we? No, we, we, you know, we feel it. One time my son um, fell down in school and scratched his knee and I was at home and suddenly my knee started to hurt me. I was at home and, and I couldn't figure out why am I feeling, what's going on with my knee? And then I went to pick him up from school, oh my God, his knees were all torn up and I knew that's what I was feeling. We need to pray with that, you know, that kind of passion. We need to feel the person's situation when we go before God in their behalf and pray with a sense of urgency. You know, our prayers must have depth, not just, you know, top top. Yeah. No, we, we have to feel it. And when we do, God will hear us. And I've gone over my time. I'm hurrying. I'm sorry. <coughs> Luke 18, 1, 1 to 8. This was the the parable that Jesus spoke, he said, men are always to pray and not faint. And then he told them a story about a, a judge who was in a city and feared not God, neither man. He had no regard for anyone. And this widow came to him saying, avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, 
For though I fear not God, nor regard my yet, because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God, who is not unjust, but just, avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? With all the craziness that's going on in our world today, people are losing faith. But we can't. We just cannot lose faith. Okay? We, we cannot allow our faith to quit. We have to persevere. Like this widow, she bugged the king, and she bugged him, and bugged him, and she nagged him. Every day she was there wherever he was telling him, avenge me, avenge me. And eventually he said, I'm, I, you know, I'm tired of her. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to give her what she wants. We have to stay before God's face day and night. Daniel, in the book of Daniel, it says Daniel prayed three times a day. Three times a day he knelt down in his room by his window and he prayed. We need to pray, folks. You know, prayer is needed in the church today. It's not just uh, on us, the intercessors. It's the church. The whole church the needs whole to be church. praying. Uh -huh. Pray for each other. Uh -huh. Pray for our country. Pray for our government officials. Pray for our school system. Pray for our economy. Pray, you know, for other churches where, you know, they've probably lost their vision. We just need to pray. He said, pray for those in authority so that we would live a safe and peaceful life. We're the ones who benefit when we pray for these people because when we pray for them, God will lead them in the direction that they should go. And we're the beneficiaries of the good that comes out of that. All right? Doesn't matter which party you belong to. Only God isn't interested in party. That doesn't, That's you know, right. he's not seeing that. We need to pray. And as we pray, you know, God says that, you know, just like that judge, you know, he, you know, he gave the, the widow what she desired. He said he will hear us. He will avenge, he will avenge them speedily. Speedily. So persistence is the key yes. to make sure that our faith doesn't quit. We cannot allow our faith to quit. Uh -huh. We have, we are in control. Yes. We have, we have to be purposeful in the way we do things. You know, people do things on purpose. Mm -hmm. We have to have faith on purpose. We have to pray on purpose, even when we don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. Pray nonetheless. Pray, pray, pray. And as we pray, and I'm going to have to continue this. It, it will ignite our faith. Uh -huh. yes. The more we pray, more we will reignite yes. our faith. It yes. will soar to a higher level. Yes. And we'll find ourselves believing God that we never thought that we were able to believe him for. And we will see answers. We will see amazing answers. I mean, and you know, God will just do the impossible in our lives. Right? He'll send your hand, Lord, to, to you know, to yes. reduce your rent. He might even tell the mortgage company to, you know, cancel your mortgage. Mm -hmm. It's possible. It's possible. It's very possible. All things are possible with God. Amen. 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 Well, you may have went over, but I wish we had a little longer. That's awesome, awesome. I'm telling you, we love scripture. That was some awesome scripture too, Jim. And so we're going to be persistent this week. We're going to get an expectation before us. We're going to find the scripture that gives us God's will and his promise. And we're going to go for it. And we're going to see miracles happen. And you know, people talk about, well, you know, God really doesn't do a miracle for me. Well, you know what? you got breath in your body. And all you got to do is ask him. He will give you the desires of your heart. But you've got to seek him. And just like Jim said, be persistent. Be passionate. So that's, that's I think she gave us our marching uh, papers for this week. That's what we got to do. We got to be passionate, praying, and expect. All right, well, we thank you so much for joining us tonight on Facebook. And those that were in the sanctuary, we're going to follow out with prayer. Father God, we just thank you so much. We thank you for your servant, Jim. We thank you for the good teaching. And Father God, we just thank you that she teaches what you 
need to feed us this day, this time, Father God. And we just thank you for that good word. We thank you, Father God, that as we seek you with persistence and expectation, you will perform your word. And we just thank you, Father, for that. Give us strength this week, Holy Spirit. Let us see where we need to um, help others and, and be of your purpose and give us the strength to do that. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.